Amen. <laughs> and when you get through that one, then we'll find those collapsible hoops. And just when you get all the way through, we'll let it collapse right around your feet and you'll fail again because we're the ones in charge, not you. But that's not God. Well, God, what, why? i got to go back to this. I'm just feeling the need to go back to it. What about the wrath of God? What about His wrath? I thought He was wrathful and jealous. Think about this. It was a great story. The guy who wrote The Shack... Um, I always forget his name. William Young. Yeah, William Young. Thank you. Who said that? <laughs> Gold star on your forehead. He's got it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Feather in your cap, too, by the way. <laughs> William Young wrote this book, and he I saw this interview with him, and he said, This friend of mine, when he was a little boy, related a story to me. He said he was out in the woods, and he was playing, and he got into a nest of hornets. And when he got into this nest of hornets, his first instinct was to run back to the cabin. And as he's running back to the cabin, his mother is looking out the window of the cabin, and she sees her son running toward the cabin with a cloud of hornets following him, ready to attack. She came running out the door, running directly at her son with fury on her face. And the son said this, If I didn't know, number one, who she was, and number two, my relationship to her, I would have sworn that her fury was directed at me. I thought she was going to kill me, but I knew that I was her son and that wasn't possible, and it didn't take but a split second to realize her fury was at the hornets. And if we understand God's wrath, God's wrath isn't against us. God's wrath is against everything that in this world that's killing us, that's preventing us from being free. He's not angry with us. He loves us. He wants what's best for us. And whatever is keeping us from finding that freedom in Him is where His wrath is directed. We've got to get a hold of that or we're going to continue to think that God is a wrathful, vengeful, angry God. But listen to this. Anybody else get called to the office in school besides me? Right? And when you got called to the office, is that a place you wanted to go? No. Because you knew somebody was going to be in there going, ba 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 right? If you think God is going to do nothing but scold you and tell you about all the things you've messed up and all the things you're doing wrong, you're not going to want to go talk to God. But when you understand that what God wants you to understand is this, I love you with never-ending love. I would like to see the best for you. I want to show you the way to go. I want to prove to you how I've adopted you into my family and you never have to be taken away. I want to show you that my love is real and perfect and true. I want you to understand that you can be free to be you because of me. When we get a hold of that in our lives, we start to get free. We start to understand that it's about following the spirit that he put in us to lead us and to guide us. And we can start walking in that freedom. If we think we have to perform, we're keeping ourselves in a trap. We're keeping ourselves in a trap. Now, it's not a license to go do what you want. I want, to, I want to qualify that. This isn't a license to go do what you want. Paul said it in Romans 6. He started out with the question, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. But then he goes on and he clarifies it. Don't you know, brethren, you believers, don't you realize, don't you understand that you're dead? And we go, I don't remember dying. No, you're dead and you're buried. And you've been raised up a brand new creation, holy and without blame before Him in love. And it goes on and it says, So therefore, here's that redneck Okeechobee term, reckon, <clears throat> reckon ye yourselves. It means count on the fact. Reckon ye yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin and trespasses and alive unto Christ. It's in Romans 6. It's not my words. Look it up in your own Bible. It's hard for us to hear because that's not our life experience. But the truth according to God is you're dead and you've been raised up a brand new creation holy and without blame before Him in love. And until you get a hold of that, you're going to be living like a dead man. What am, I, what am I allowed to do? What am I not allowed to do? What can I do? What can I do? We get so wrapped up in what are sins and what aren't sins and then here comes the Bible and says you're dead to sin. Quit worrying about it. You follow me. You live under grace now. Really? But I still make mistakes. Yeah, but God doesn't condemn you. 
The only one condemning you and making you feel guilt is you. Let me get back to my study here. Listen to how guilt handled was handled with these brothers. <clears throat> now the men were frightened when they were taken to his house. They were talking about going to Joseph's house. They went back with more money. They went back with the same money they had in the grain bags that they got sent home with. And they felt like somebody was setting them up to look like thieves. They were frightened when they went back to his house and they thought, we were brought here because of the silver that was in, put back into our sacks the first time. He wants to attack us and overpower us and seize us as slaves and take our donkeys. He's going to imprison us. We just know it. Boy, are we, we guilty. Did you ever step into a situation knowing you were guilty? You didn't want to be there. Oh, man, am I in trouble. And Or maybe, maybe you felt like somebody set you up. That's what they're thinking. Oh my gosh, we got all the grain and all our money back and we got to the next town and there was the money. Man, we're in trouble. We got the grain and the money. They're going to see us as thieves. They set us up. Guilt causes apprehension and suspicion to pulsate. Guilt causes apprehension and suspicion to pulsate. Genesis 43, it goes on. So they went up to Joseph's steward and they spoke to him at the entrance to the house. They said, please, sir... We came down here the first time to buy food, but at the place where we stopped for the night, we opened our sacks, and each of us found his silver, the exact weight, in the mouth of his sack. So we brought it back with us. We've also brought additional silver with us to buy food. We don't know who put the silver in our sacks. We're, well, you know, we're backing up, we're backpedaling, I'm going to paint a pretty picture. I don't know what to do. <clears throat> Listen to this. To be a person of grace... The heart must be right. The heart that has experienced grace will handle any and all things with the right attitude. The heart that has experienced grace is going to be able to offer grace to others. The heart that has experienced forgiveness is going to be able to offer forgiveness to others. The heart that has received God's love is going to be able to offer love to others. You ever go into a store and uh, they slip you an extra 10 in your change? Nobody's looking. What are you going to do? See, real character is what you do when nobody's looking. But God's close at hand. You better, you better watch out. See, that's not, that's not a threat of God. That's a threat of man. I already know God sees what's going on. If you think you got something to hide from God, you're fooling yourself. God already knows. You know what He wants? He wants to have fellowship with you. He wants you to lay it out in the light and say, Hey, God, this is a big one. I can't handle it, can you? He'll be, yeah, handled it a long time ago. I was just waiting for you to come to me. I handled it over 2,000 years ago when I sent my son on the cross to pay for it. You didn't even know what was happening. But I knew. I knew what your life was about. And I want to set you free from it. You don't have to live in that guilt and shame anymore. You can let it go. You've been holding it for how long now? It's your choice. Your choice. Another thing I want to tell you, I don't care if it was two decades ago, Two years ago, two months ago, two weeks ago, or two seconds ago. It's in the past. Leave it there. Let it stay in the past. It's gone. 